these are Chris's bills. Um, let's see. So, um, we're what what we thought we would do is oh, look is at. Um, we have four bills that kind of deal with uh, um, lobbyists, campaigns, public and financing and stuff. We thought we would lump them all together because it would be the same, basically the same people interested in all of those. And we don't know where any of them are going to go. We haven't yet decided if we want to pursue any of them. So. Um, I, what I think makes sense, tell me if you think I'm right here, Brian, mm -hmm. is to just look at these bills and ask if anybody has any, you know, um, take them one at a time and see if anybody has anything to say about them. And then we'll make a decision as a committee of, of where to go with any of them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's start with 120, which is a bill that limits corporate campaign contributions to some percentage of whatever anybody else can um, can contribute to, to a campaign. We went through this last year. Yeah. And um, does anybody would anybody like to weigh in on this one? One twenty. Sorry. Um, Yes, you are late. The pro tem is We just finished really with 120, and we're not going to take it up. What? Yeah, we decided true? 120 is done. You were here. We just right. You were here to talk about it, so we're done. Well, I object to that decision. I think it's important to talk about, but we didn't that's make, fine. We didn't make, floor, that, we didn't make that decision. <laughs> but the pro tem kept you? Yes. We must speak to the pro tem. Well, it, it was. Yeah. One o'clock. I didn't have a quorum this morning for about 10 minutes. Well, I guess if I'm being more direct, it was Peter. I had to check uh, in about something. Uh, and he can't talk to you? Well, I mean, I'm also busy, as you know. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so I'm so Okay, get out the way. Okay. Let me, before Put on your hair shirt and sure. let's go forward. <laughs> but before we begin, so I'm all those in favor of 120? Um, <laughs> so, um, Allison, what did you have to say? I just want to say, look, we have three beautiful blooms. And three on the way. And us, at least. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Yes, it's, it's all happy, this yeah. wonderful hot air that we are blowing uh, every well, day. Well, actually, really cool. <coughs> it's so the fertile, the fertile grounds here. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so what I what we talked about, Chris, was that we would take the, we plump these four together because they're kind of all the same audience. Yes. Not the same issue necessarily, but the same audience who might be interested. So we just put them here to talk about whether we should go forward with any or not. So we'll start with 120 and see if anybody has anything they would like to say now about 120, and then and then you can have your say. But we'll hear. It. Dan, did you? Dan, right? Yes. Uh, all the conflicts we can't. Right. Talk. Did you want to weigh in? At this time, no. Well, this may be your chance. I, I mean, we're either going to do it or we're not going to do it. Okay. I don't have, it's okay. I don't have comments prepared. I okay. can say this is something that deeper would support. Okay, that's what we want to hear. Okay. Um, did the Attorney General's office want to weigh in on this one? Yes. Okay, would you join us? Sure. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I yeah, am, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Okay. But. My name is Joshua Diamond. I'm the Deputy Attorney General. And um, so we have not had an opportunity to do a deep dive, but what I'd like to do is identify some legal issues that I think the committee should think about if they are going to take up this bill. Um, my comments really aren't designed to address the policy questions that are addressed here, but to identify some legal uh, issues that might come up that I think would warrant further examination. So um, as I understand it, the, 
the scope of S120 is really to limit campaign contributions to corporations to 5% of the contribution limits, if, if I understand okay. that correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And historically, uh, the jurisprudence in this area has recognized two um, policy objectives pre-Citizens United that would allow for something like this. Uh, in the 80s, early 90s, the Supreme Court identified the interests of protecting the shareholders, the minority shareholder interests, and also the concern that um, corporate ability to amass wealth could unfairly influence elections or the election process. And those were, um, under First Amendment jurisprudence, kind of compelling governmental interests that could justify these types of restrictions on arguably the free speech rights of, of corporations and their ability to contribute or their association rights, I should say, to, to candidates. Um, as I'm sure to no surprise to all of you, Citizens United kind of upended those, uh, that analysis, identifying really quid pro quo as the policy objective that could uh, allow for those types of contributions. And so um, one concern is that uh, such a limitation may uh, uh, run up uh, against the First Amendment here. There is a case uh, out of the Western District of Michigan from 2010 uh, whereby the Michigan statute, I think similar to our statute, would not only impact contributions to candidates, but also impact contributions to independent PACs. Um, and that was struck mm -hmm. down as an infringement upon the First Amendment. The IEP? Packs, yes. The, not the regular packs. And I didn't read the, the decision closely. It was a last minute. Okay. I'm not sure how deeply they dove into the definition of an IE pack. Vermont's mm -hmm. definition, as you probably know, is more expansive than the federal definition. But the idea of being um, an entity that was not coordinating with a candidate uh, to restrict mm -hmm. those contributions would not reach the quid pro quo concern and therefore run afoul of the First Amendment. The other issue here is that corporations are not defined um, beyond corporations. So are you trying to capture LLPs, LLCs, other entities? And also, should you consider exempting certain types of corporations as well, uh, non certain nonprofits? There is Supreme Court precedent from the 1980s FEC versus Massachusetts Citizens Life that dealt with uh, corporate restrictions on campaign contributions um, and basically said that to the extent that you were going after nonprofit corporations that did not make their money from business activities, that that would uh, impact their First Amendment interests and they struck down uh, a corporate contribution limit that went after these types of nonprofits. So further examination, I think. Yeah, could you could you tell me again what what these kinds of nonprofits are? You're well, talking about the PERS or I, maybe I, I don't I don't have I haven't done the okay. research. Oh, but oh, are oh. they a membership nonprofit uh, mm -hmm. as as opposed to a corporate entity that's selling goods? Okay. If you yeah. think about the idea of the concern of amassing wealth that could upend the. Um, the election system, a membership organization, um, mm -hmm. maybe certain co-ops. I'm, I'm speculating. I don't know. Uh, but there is a case out there that would warrant uh, examination as to whether uh, to survive a potential legal challenge that the mm -hmm. definition of corporation should be narrowly drawn in some instances and maybe broadened in others to capture LLCs and, uh, LLPs and other business entities. So that is the... Uh, the scope of my comments with regards to S120, and uh, are there any questions? There, there are, as I understand, there's several states that ban corporate donations. Um, are you aware of any of them, and you probably haven't dug into it too much, but that have seen any challenge post Citizens United? I mean, has that changed the legal underpinning for those bans? So um, that were Michigan. That's case. the Michigan case. So I haven't done a deep dive, um, but Michigan was the one case that I pulled up quickly yeah. that seems to be addressing this. Because yeah. off here. Yeah. Um, so th what we have here 
from BPIRG last year, yeah. 22 states completely permitted. Yeah. Six allowed corporations to contribute an unlimited amount, and 19 imposed the same restrictions on corporate contributions as individuals, which is, we would be in that category. Right now. Yeah. Right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I would say my interest, <coughs> I, I don't understand why we would, this draft has this 5%. That seems very odd to me that we would. The way it was introduced. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. But uh, so to a state house, you could, <laughs> some corporate Asian could give 50 bucks, but the CEO could give you 1,000 bucks. That's kind of weird. <clears throat> so I, to me, we should either ban them or not. Okay. Um, I would say, and maybe for the witness, I have never taken corporate money in my campaigns. and. Last year, for the first time, I've taken PAC money. Um, some of the PACs, their checks would say, um, you know, I can't remember exactly what, but blah, 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 ink. And so this would flummox a lot of us, and we would call and say, what's going on here? I thought this was your PAC. And so that seems like a new distinction. And I don't know if there's a way to thread that needle, but if there is, I would like us to figure that out. I mean, it's a little bit what you're talking about around the nonprofit. I'm speculating here, and maybe my colleague from the Secretary of State's office can elaborate a little bit further. And I hesitate to speculate, but um, Vermont, I believe, has broadly defined what a political action committee can be. And as a result, it captures corporate corporations. And so you can coexist as a corporation and a PAC at the same time. It's not a, a PAC could be a separate entity under the IRS codes, but it also, under Vermont law, can be a corporation. So we will hear from the Secretary of State about that. And I know that when we were dealing with this before, we had we heard that we had something like 100,000 corporations in Vermont, I mean, registered Wait, corporations. Number? In well, most Vermont. of our far farms are incorporated in it. Yeah, and it has a lot of our there. farms are incorporated. And, and we yes, did, we looked at the federal guidelines when we were dealing with this before and the federal guidelines are 134 pages so it isn't simply banning corporate contributions so if you wear green socks on Tuesday you can donate but if you wear red socks and striped socks on Thursday you can't I mean it's it mm. the, it is not clear that a corporation is a corporation all the time and anyway Let's, we can hear from the Secretary of State. So is Eve not with us? Uh, so Eve was in court this week. Oh. So uh, I'm What did she do? She uh, had a uh, pellet argument. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Knowing Eve. Really? Yeah. Really. Well, she could have many. She could be there as a jury member. Right. But Claire was just teasing. So, OK. Awesome. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Will? Would you like to join us? Sure. Will Senning, Director of Elections in the Secretary of State's office. I think this is the first time you've been here. Nice to see you guys. Here. Yeah. A new session. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I did not have a whole lot to say on 120, to be honest. My one comment, I hope. Oh, my first comment was going to be to consult the AG's office, which I've now done. <laughs> My second was going to be that I think this bill or any bill in whatever form that attempts to limit and or ban corporate contributions, I immediately try and think of it from the administrative standpoint, of course, which is what I do in my role in the process. It would essentially have to be a self-regulating um, system at this point without serious further investment in our software um, and particularly around it, it, that that dovetails with difficulty of defining what a corporation is and which corporations would be <coughs> however you end up threading that needle or parsing that it would be tough for our system to do an analysis of that entity as you're just typing your name in you know whoever Inc as your <laughs> contributor so it would either be a place where the, the file or you, the candidate, PAC or party, would have to check a box that identifies <coughs> them as corporate or not, 
but then that would place that analysis kind of on you, which I suppose that person would have to be doing anyway in terms of, am I going to accept this or not? Um, but the only function of doing that, I was trying to think as I'm sitting here, would be to enable like the flags that come up in the system for you guys when a contribution is above the limit. You get a warning. We have no hard stops in the system to that effect, but if you have a contributor who goes over the limit or a single contribution, you get a message pop up. And to make that same kind of message pop up on either a 5% analysis, we would have to know whether that contributor name you typed in fit the definition in the law. And that's either very tough to do in the software, or I think the better approach would be it's on the candidate to figure it out, enter the contribution under the current system like it is, and then you, you deal with enforcement from the AP's office reviewing reports. But I think that the issues that Mr. Diamond pointed out are the appropriate ones to think about from a legal perspective. Oh, last year you last, Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm just curious, Will. I hadn't realized that you had pop-up uh, warnings. You don't have anything that identifies people who haven't filed. I mean, we talked about this last right. year. I mean, it's a... It's always a frustration when you try and report on time yeah. uh, and other people don't. And uh, you don't have anything to enforce that. And you don't, it strikes me that I wouldn't want to have it fully self enforced, self regulated. I'd love to have you guys do spot checks on it and flag, even if you call the candidate and say, what what is this? Are we talking about corporate contributions? Yeah, now? we did this. I would want I wouldn't want it to be fully self regulated. I would want it to be spot checks. Yeah, I would want to have spot the checks and, and encourage you to do more spot checks on all the candidates reporting because as you know it's a very bag. So if if you were gonna do that, we would have to have a clearer definition of what a corporation was. Yeah. Well I think that's part of what we're being asked for anyway. Okay. When you were here last year, you, you had one other concern, and that is that you can only identify Vermont corporations. So we, we have other people, a lot of people from out of state who are corporations who want to give us money. Thank you. That goes to what, another potential method for that would be to have some communication between our database and the corporations division's database, which there isn't yet, or maybe if you enter a name, we would fly, hey, they're, they're a registered entity in the in the Vermont Corporations Division. So that is a possibility. That also would be investment in the software um, and would not be able to be done outside of Vermont Direct. So if if you had everybody, if, if we pass something like this, whether it's a total ban or whatever, and it just said corporations, anybody who's registered, any one of those 100,000 people registered in the corporate division would fall under this unless we more closely define why would they not? They're all re well, registered as corporations. The, well, I have a corporation. Right. But I can, I can write you a check. My why company. would you be able to? You're a corporation. Because it's my money. No, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. We're not saying anyone who owns a corporation can't donate. We're saying Pearson and Company can't write you right. a check. Right, right. No, no, no. I'm saying, but so here's. Here's what happened in our, the primary a few times ago in our campaign. The question was, would you take corporate money? There were four of us. I had been here and I said, there's no ban. Um, I'll decide who I take money from. Becca said the same thing. She'd decide. One candidate said, I would never take corporate money. And afterwards I said, to him privately, you should be really careful because you have taken corporate money. I looked at your report and he said, no, I haven't. And I said, you took money from Mountain Mowings Farm, Inc. Right. And he said, but that's not the kind of corporation I mean. I mean Monsanto. <laughs> so we would have anybody that had Inc. or LLP or LLC or anything behind their name could not contribute. Correct. That would be the, That's the point. so it's any of the 100,000 yeah. entities registered. Okay. I mean, I think that's the point because those are, there's people behind them. Right. And the people can write their check. They just can't, you know, I mean. Do it on the corporate It doesn't check. sound evil when you talk about the farmer down the road using their business account. And it's not. But 
it's also not hard for that farmer to just write your personal check or use if they a have credit card account. Account. Most or they, right, they can give you some cash. Oh, we can't take cash. We can't take, we can take cash. up to fifty dollars. Up to fifty dollars. Still can. Right? Yeah. Okay, Allison. So another way to get at it is through the increasing number of uh, political uh, online contribution portal points. For the Democrats, it's Act Blue. For the Republicans, it's Act Red. I don't know what is it. Anyway. There are online ways you give to campaigns. Act weird. <laughs> I would look forward to that. Um, anyway, the, you could also have, a, because they're specific to your state and to your race, you could have a reminder that you uh, on those that you couldn't give, uh, that corporations couldn't give, and that you have to give as individuals. I mean, there are increasingly no numbers of ways you could be with mine, donors as well as candidates. So I guess the, the question that we need to answer first is do we want to, if we decide we want to pursue this and we want to, we want to ban corporate contributions, that's, if we decide that, then we can figure out what we mean by it and how we go forward with it. But I don't think trying to figure out how we would go forward with it and how we would notify people before we decide whether we want to go forward with it makes a lot of sense in terms of the conversation. Chris? Well, am I hearing you right in saying that it actually, from your system point of view, the 5% as is drafted here is impossible? I mean, they're both sort of impossible, but, but also including this percentage is sort of extra difficult. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't say impossible. Yeah. Okay. Virtually. So I know that the Medical Society and the Dental Society, because they both contributed to my campaigns, have formed separate uh, really political packs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So how we, I mean, I just can't figure out, they're not corporations, but I'm guessing corporations can do the same thing. Sure. Can, right. they, can yes. Monsanto form a pack? So what right. have we, what have we done except I'll support you, lawyers? Uh, those packs right. have to file if they're if they're in Vermont, they have to tell you who, where their money comes from and where they're spending their money. So we have a disclosure. It's still you're right that it's a workaround for them or a loophole, but it does have much better transparency uh, from where that money is coming from. Well, well, you know, I, I can I may I follow yeah, up, true. Madam Chair? I'm thinking, true, you know, that's hmm? true. Oh, it that's is. Correct. It is true. But so what What kind of pack, and you know I'm going there, what kind of pack did Bernie make that we don't know? And he sent money to lots of people. Yeah. We don't know who put that money in, do we? Is it a different, sure. are there different sure. kinds of packs? Any pack. Yes, has, there are. Has, Not the dark packs. money ones. They don't have to. Well, I mean, that's, that's my question, if there are different right. kinds of packs. There's different kinds yeah. of uh, five one four. Not all are trends. Well, that's true. So the yeah. uh, C4 can give money to a pack. And that pack will say, I got money from the C4. Right. Oh, okay. You won't know who gave who, money to the to C4. The C4. Right. That's, That's right. another. But again, right. I, so is this perfect? No. Is it a move towards better it's transparency? I would say absolutely. Yeah. So my question is, if, now I'm not, I don't know if I've taken money from a corporation or not, because I can't remember. I mean, uh, are the Troopers Association? I don't think that's They probably have a political action. They do. Yeah. It's a, uh, uh, but so why is it more transparent if it says I took money from Pepsi Cola or I took money from Vermont Yankee? Okay. Or Highly Vermont Democrats. Likely. Or Vermont Democrats. No, no, no. I'm yeah. talking about a corporation here. Mm -hmm. I took money from Energy or I took money from Vermonters for Happy Families, which is a pack of energy. So the, if, if I dig deep enough, I can find out who Vermonters for Happy Families are and that they're, they're funded by energy. But I have to dig for that where if I just take money from energy, it says I took money from energy. You don't have to dig. You know where that money came from. It came from energy. So why is that more transparent? That's a good point. Well, I, I guess I would flip the question if you're asking yeah. me. Why do we have a democratic process where corporations contribute to campaigns? This is, they don't vote. They don't, they're, you know, I mean, 
I'd be open to banning PACs, but I don't think that's Oh, wait, you can't ban PACs. Why yeah. would you even want to? You can't. I'd love to. So, Fuck so you can't. Why so, would you ban PACs? Because I actually happen to think that democracy should be fueled by people. I agree. But yeah. A PAC is just a bunch of people that come together with a similar That's interest. right. So we can't ban them. So, but we can clearly say, to me, there is a very clear distinction that Pepsi-Cola should not be engaged directly in the political process. You can't ban PACs, so they're still going to have that right. loophole. But they're, they're you know, you, you see people, some people use the corporate ability to give corporate donations to double their donation. So I give to, to you, yeah, I max out to you $1,500, and then Pearson Company gives you $1,500. Do I deserve twice the influence than, than is available to somebody that doesn't have a corporation? I don't think so. Well, how is it different if uh, uh, spouses get money? Spouse is a voter. They're a I know. They're um, individual. Yeah, but, they have, but that family has twice the influence that otherwise have. I was just thinking back to well, what is the most transparent? Yeah. To me, the issue is, because I have this assumption that voters think about who they're going to vote for and they look at information and facts instead of who has the most TV commercials. I don't know. And if that were the case, then what would, what would influence me the most is to see where you got your money, who stands behind you, what, what does that mean? I mean, we have a piece of legislation, and I happen to know that groups that I don't agree with ever on anything are in favor of this and I'm working really hard on myself not to be in disfavor of it because they're in favor of it uh, makes a difference so maybe it is more uh, and we did not collude on this but I, I I tend to think maybe it is more straightforward if I know that energy and global foundries and well, I don't know I can't think of any you know big energy corporations sponsored your campaign rather than Dakota and company Coda. Yeah, well, I, I don't, you know, I don't know who any of them are, but I do know who Energy is. I know who Global Foundries is. I know who Pepsi Cola is. I guess that's what I'm saying. Well, I guess I, I would also point out that. Yeah. I think the public has a perception that the way we fund campaigns and elections in this country is broken. No, yeah, well, and, well and they're right. It, the way we spend it is broken. Well, around, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the whole soup to nuts is <coughs> unsatisfactory. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think that this is, a, it would be a small step to acknowledge that, to take a step that we clearly can take with, uh, I think, not very much legal liability, um, to, to kind of push back and try as best we can to push the election process back into the hands of voters and, and individuals. Here, here. So here's one of the questions that came up when we did this before, and if I can just raise this. It came from a member of the Senate on the floor. So I um, can't take a contribution from mobile oil because they're a corporation, right? But I have bazillions of dollars invested in mobile oil, and I get that money as a dividend, and I can fund my own campaign, or I can take money from you, but because all of your money comes from mobile oil. I, I, I mean, it, it, or I can fund my own campaign out of my dividends from mobile oil. Does mobile oil, ha is that straightforward? Well, we did include that in the ethics bill that if yeah, you, you were getting it. more you than ten, to, yeah. more than ten right. from your mobile oil shares, you, you'd have to. Well, not from all. You would best. have to. But we have begun the process of identifying that. Right. And you know, I don't think any of us would argue our ethics bill was perfect, but yeah. it was a step in the right direction. Forward. It's perfect. Put this in the same kind of way. Okay. And and okay. I actually think that. It's very different. I mean, I mean, you, I, my guess is that the individual's priorities are not aligned fully with the corporations they invest in necessarily. I mean, I think they're two separate things. Then they should no. invest in. Well, no. uh, oh, that's yeah, different. That's a different <laughs> question altogether. 
Okay, so committee, do we want to go forward with this or not, with, with or without a percentage? I would vote yes. So would I. No. Sir? I, I would think about it. I'd like to see finance reform. I, I think this is kind of a blunt instrument. Um, but I don't have a lot of enthusiasm for, for starting from scratch right now. If this is a better idea, I'll listen. Well, we can take some more testimony. I don't know what else we'll hear. But well, maybe uh, we ought to hear testimony on, I, on something in I, addition to this. I'd like to hear from other states. I'd like to hear from the states. You know, there are 22 states that have done this. That's almost half the states right. in the country. Yes. And uh, it would it'd be interesting to me to see how they tackled the nut of defining corporations. And, uh, you know, I, I, just, I, I think it would be worth a little more testimony and then deciding what we would. Well, who should we hear from then? Uh, we're not going to hear from the states. We have the report from all the states. And then who put this out? In a CO? Huh? Mm -hmm. And CSL. And CSL. Okay. That's what I mean. Yeah. Maybe they have some sort of analysis of it. Well, they do. Right here. It's in our folder. Well, I mean, here's it's the spreadsheet or whatever you want yeah. to call it. Yeah. It's, it's interesting how they, they, yeah. they, they don't it's, line up. The ones that are prohibited are not the ones that They're all different. Kentucky, that bastion of progressive. Yeah, right. Right, and Massachusetts. And these are for their state candidates, not on all. Is this true for? Well, we can't. All? We don't do federal. We right, can't. Right. Do we don't do all federal. This is. I, 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 I guess. Mean, I guess we can hear some more. I don't know who. who well, will walk, do we want somebody yeah. to walk us through this? I don't know. Well. To follow up on some of Josh's okay. questions, I think we should, it, it, it might be worth further examination on the legal issues Josh identified, um, and um, and which, and identify which corporations and, and, and we're trying to capture and, and identify them. I would ask that testify, yes. address the question of is it more or less transparent when Monsanto yes moves to a pack and gives the money. So I just, um, it has to be an improvement. And I'm not sure that particular thing is an improvement. Because right. we know they'll go around it. In, in my mind, transparency is really the issue here. Because you have to show who gave you the money. And, and I don't know if it's, who would we hear from about whether it was more or less transparent. I'm um, chair. I don't know. That's why you get paid so much for being chair. Oh, damn. I Darn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Um, I, I don't okay. know who uh, that would be. Okay, well, but we'll I'd ask the people who are, who are promoting this. And maybe we'll, and we'll have Eve come in. Yeah. And she's out of court. And um, walk us through some more. Okay. So we didn't decide. No. So keep going. We did decide to keep yeah. going. All right, we did trash it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's move on to 132 oh, and uh, see thinking. what we think about that one. Oh, yeah, this so, one's awesome. It so should be combined with the, the badge. Yes. Forget the badge. No way. They go together. I thought this was the badge. No, this is this is saying that if you have a, if you represent a, a group, you have to be able to disclose who your members are. I'm not exactly sure who it refers to or what it means. Yeah. So if somebody well, we've had, will uh, explain this to us. Yes. I can. You are one of the sponsors. Oh, good. <laughs> good thing. Thank you. I can explain that because from my first year in finance, 15 years ago, we had a witness who said I represent 150 industries statewide, and we think this bill is really awful, and here's why. And I said, so who do you represent? What kind of businesses? Well, they couldn't say. We looked on the website. No, it wasn't there. I called the Secretary of State's office, and they said, well, they don't have to disclose that. So I don't know if that lobbyist represents himself and his best friend, or just himself. or And I still don't know. 15 years later, he's still here, and he still represents a whole bunch of uh, businesses. And I don't know who they are. They're not corporations. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that was a oh. joke. Oh. <laughs> they probably are. Well, I don't know. And right. it occurred to me at the time that 
you know, it's a small state, and we don't know how, how all testimony is important, but if you think you're hearing from half the state, that means that's different than if you're hearing from two or three special interest groups, and we can't tell. But this refers to an, a contracted in lobbyist, right? Or is it the employer contract? It's when um, you're lobbyist. registering. It. Lobbyist employers. Yes, but. At our membership organizations. Well, do you know who this refers to? Is it a, uh, the contract employees? Or is it the, does, if VPER has corporate members, members who aren't an individual, but groups who are members, I don't know if you do or not. But if they do, do they have to give that information? Or is it Andy McLean who says, I represent um, the, the Happy Families? Do I have to say who's a mem what organizations are a member of Happy Families? Which is it? Do you have the bill? Yes, I have the bill. Members that are not natural persons. I think yeah, it's the first it, thing you said. It's the, the first thing. It's not the contract employee. I mean the contract lobbyist. It's the employer lobbyist. Well, that this is this is the way I read this is targeted at the employer. At the employer side of the equation. And so you have these the employers in RLR are the clients of the lobbyists. Mm -hmm. They're the people who retain the lobbyists. They hire the lobbyists, be it Coca-Cola, Beeper, whoever. So if that employer is a membership organization a group or coalition of members, including a business trade or consumer interest association, then they say how many there are, and if any of them are individuals, they disclose the name. So when, when Andy McLean registers and one of his clients... He's a lobbyist. He's a Not contract a lobbyist. Huh? Oh, yeah, oh. right, right. Uh, he's the, yeah, the lobbyist. He's a contract lobbyist. He registers, and one of his clients is um, the Automobile Association. Yeah, the, good example. Then he has to say who the Not him. member. Sorry. The, Automobile oh, the, the, Association. the Automobile Association has to say who the members, the right. non-individual members of the Automobile Association is. Frank's uh, Automotive Center in Bellows Falls and, and the, okay. And does the Automobile Association already have to register because they're hiring a lobbyist? Yes. So yeah. they're already yeah. in there on their right. own. And then somewhere it says Andy McLean is our. They both link each other. That's they right. Two right. Right. So right. In, in yeah. there, Andy doesn't have any burden in right. this case. The Only employer. they have to say. All oh, right, we are the Automobile Association, but we're actually my dealership and my brother's dealership. And right, right. Yes. That's, that's all we that's are. Yeah. So. And that's the point. Right, right. No, I get that. But my question is then, does it also apply to the lobbyist that is the employer is also the, the lobbyist is also the employer? I mean, VPER doesn't contract lobbyists, they are their own yeah, lobbyists. lobbyists right. so I see what you they, mean. they would have to do the same thing if it's a if it's an an employer Correct. that has memberships that aren't individuals. Okay. All right. The best way I would answer that question though is there's no distinction right now between in filing requirements for people who have contract lobbyists or people who have in-house lobbyists. Mm -hmm. Even in Beeper's case with in-house lobbyists, all the lobbyists register and Beeper registered okay. as an employer. As an employer. Okay. And beyond that registration, yeah. where Beeper is. So, but and you did say Beeper would be um, subject to the same disclosure, so sure. non-natural persons. Depending yeah. on how this definition is interpreted, I don't know the nature of how Beeper is set up, but yes. Do you think we need to get a legal interpretation from Eve or somebody? Or is this pretty clear? It's pretty clear to me now. That, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I don't care if they. I'd want to let counsel to help us through that. The one thing that's come up is around freedom of association piece to this. Mm -hmm. um, Are we limiting that? But I, 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 I I'm not an well, agree. Seems hard to. That's where the say that this would be limiting their right to associate. So that'd be a question for Eve. 
and is that correct? Yeah, Judge, do I, I can speak to that. Okay. Uh, yeah, please do. Do you want me to introduce myself or going to? No, no, no. If, if Could somebody you be here is... every day for the. <laughs> <laughs> I love these issues. Um, I, I do actually. Um, so we hope so. There's a. A case, now I understand the interest of what the committee is, is trying to accomplish, but think back to 1958 <laughs> and, oh, and, and, the, and the Deep South oh. Oh, and yeah. the state of Alabama wanted to get the membership lists of the NAACP. And so the NAACP right. sued and the First Amendment was alleged that this violates theirs and their members' right of freedom of association, the Supreme Court agreed. And so the question is whether or not entities that aren't individuals have First Amendment rights, and the Supreme Court has reaffirmed that, said yes. has said oh. yes, and, and therefore, and I don't know what degree of scrutiny would be applied, but let's assume that it's something more than what's called rationality review, it's strict scrutiny or mm -hmm. an exacting scrutiny. What is the um, important or compelling governmental interest that justifies that disclosure? And is that disclosure narrowly tailored to achieve that compelling governmental interest? And that would be something that would need to be explored, and I uh, would encourage this committee to identify those issues if they're going to go down that path. Mm -hmm. um, so we had this come up today in economic development, because we have a lobbyist in the building who represents a, a manufacturing association who does not disclose their members. We, so many of our- We just talked about this. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. And we had the we asked those questions, yeah. That, and to me, there are compelling reasons to understand that because we get, the state supports so much manufacturing in so many different capacities through tax expenditures, through training programs, through tons of stuff. There is a state investment in that association and its membership, and very important to know, it would be important to know, in that capacity, who they're representing. And so what I, I can't tell you is I haven't done enough research mm -hmm. to identify whether the courts have recognized certain compelling governmental interests that can give you a sense of what would be, um, that would pass judicial scrutiny under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I think further research would be needed to do that. That makes, if, Claire, did you? Well, I, ha I have yeah. another question, but we're yeah, not no. done with that issue. Well, that is, um, you said we'd have to define a governmental interest. Mm -hmm. Why would that be so hard to know who we're electing, who's sponsoring yeah. that? Well, the question is whether it's a compelling or a yeah. substantially important governmental interest. Oh. To know who's who determines that? The, the, the court. 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 The court. <laughs> Yeah, but we explain our just our attempt to justify. Yeah, if if we pass this and right, what's the public policy? What is the, I mean, Why are we doing this? It, it, it is interesting to me that our ability to require lobbyists to register, right, pay a fee, to just because you're part of a profession, seems strange in a sense and yet courts are comfortable with that and we're saying that's because we it's very plain that you want to influence policy and you right. want to influence government and that, this seems to me to be just very in keeping with that but for example if um, a big drunk drug company uh, may um, paid membership in the Vermont Medical Society, and the Medical Society lobbied for yeah. some certain kind of medical treatment or treatment in a certain place or special prices for a certain treatment, it would tell us a lot to know that that drug company was one of their big members or was a member and paid more money than others. <laughs> but you're not the court, so you're not saying, is that correct? I'm just right. trying to identify some legal issues that I think warrant oh, okay. further examination. Yeah. Okay. Um, and are you the person that would do that for us, or is that back to Eve again because it's a... One of us would uh, one of you. get it squared away for okay. you. Is there something... Back? So this would also include unions? No, because this is... that we've, we've drawn the line for individuals, so... 
I don't think unions can have anything other than individuals. So if you had if you had a, a court if you had a, a an employer that was made up of membership of individuals, I'm trying to think now the Ethan Allen Institute. If yeah. they're if they have membership, I don't know if they do, but if they had memberships, individual memberships, and they hired a lobbyist, they would not be required to give a list because it because they're, they're individual, individual members. It's only members that aren't individuals. Okay, and Will is whispering to me here, in the case of a union, it seems like maybe they would have to divulge the number of their members. So VSEA represents, I don't know, 6,000. 6,000. NEA. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they certainly but, influence. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. we know who they are. And, but yeah. we know what we get. When they sit down, we know say we're from we're VSEA, yeah. we have an immediate picture and scale in our, in our minds that is accurate. And then you interpret their testimony as you will with some sense of accuracy, I think, of who they're sitting there on behalf yeah. of. But That's if McMillan were a member of VSCA, they would not, um, they wouldn't be able to qualify as a labor organization. Is that correct? You would. McMillan, it's a big, used to be a big textbook company. Mm -hmm. So, big yeah. publishing company. If they yeah. were a member well, of VSCA, yeah. How could they be a member of VSCA? That's, That's just the it. Question. So, they could they have corporate members, and if they did, if they could have corporate members, that then would they, be of interest to I us. See. But they only have individual members who qualify by some sort of participation in the workforce. So we know it's teachers and people who work for schools, right? So most the, of them. Not they would them. have to comply with the if it's a member organization, they would have to disclose the number of members, but not the names, unless they were not an individual. And they couldn't be a labor union if they had anything other than member organizations. Is that what I I'm hearing. I, I don't know that either, but that's what I thought you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't fathom how that could be the case. I mean, that's what I. Well, that would be a good question to ask sure. because sure. it's it's clear that um, unions, labor unions, are exempt, so they can have other kinds of members that maybe they shouldn't we, be. Exempt. We can ask Vperg, but I believe Vperg is made up of individuals only. I don't know if they have. Corporate members, maybe they do. VBSR would clearly have Cor to corporate. List, list they would have members. to. It's the same issue. Yeah, VBSR would have to give us a list. They saw they all sit okay. down. But they're on their website. Too. They, Are they? They're transparent. Yeah. yeah, but they would have but, to. And, and so they would have to yeah. push that into their lobby search. Yeah, but yeah. So then the next question is Is your system capable of handling um, the 700 names of the VBSR members? And okay. I'd have to add a field and somebody yeah. would have to type it in, not me. But that's, <laughs> yes. read that that's out to the, empl the employer. Oh, that's what they have. The yep. BBSR has it. Okay. Well, hmm. well I, I hesitate to, to add, but there could be some membership organizations like the American Chamber of Commerce that could be quite oh. voluminous in uh, their membership roles. There are national trade associations that we, we develop most likely an upload in that situation where they could upload an Excel file that you would assume they have. Yeah, it's important to think about. Right. And is this, does this apply to only in-state or any any employer? So it's the employer. Yeah. So if it was the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, yeah. But we mostly have Vermont Chamber of Commerce or Central mm -hmm. Vermont. But if they, if the U.S. Chamber of Commerce has a lobbyist here, or the one, they would have to. We have a lot of out-of-state employers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And it's not every corporation, for instance. It's just if they're uh, a coalition of members of uh, a trade or consumer interest association, like they're. We'd, we'd have to make sure we get that right, but it's not, you know, it's not every single entity that registers. It's just people that purport to represent more than themselves, basically, or on behalf of. Well, if it's a group or a coalition of members. Yeah. 
But I'm saying, you know, if uh, Monsanto's lobbying, they're just Monsanto. They're not. Right. They don't have members. But the Petrochemical Association, we need to understand who they are. Or the Field Dealers Association. I would say I'm glad that's where your focus is. That's where mine always is as the administrator. I think it should be. It's just kind of the scope that you're including here. And I think it's important as a legal matter, too. And the important phrase here is group or coalition of members. And that's pretty broad. The including language is just including, it's not limiting. Right. Um, group or coalition of members. So just to, if you're moving forward with this, we want to pay attention to that as well. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the example that comes to my mind right away, coming for this committee a lot, just to give you another good, different example, right, is the VMCPA, your municipal clerks and treasurers. All right. And so they're members of towns. Well, all right. But they the would have to disclose the whole the, the towns that were members of that group. And just, just another yeah. example of the kind of wide variety School board of stuff this would wrap in. But VLCP. But in each case, we it's are agreeing that should someone who's not a town official or a town, but is, is a corporation or a business, then they would have to. If it's a town, they'd have to register because they're not an individual. Well, they'd have to be listed. If it's the VLCT. I, I hear you. I hear you. But I, but I would assume that those are the, that's who the members are. They're just the same way I assume who the members of the state but employees union are. All towns. All towns are members. Are members of this organization. Right. You know, okay. So, and we can't say that because we know the organization, they don't have to list them. All, uh, all the, <laughs> all the, yeah, if, if, Claire, if Claire knows who the organization is, then they don't have to list them. it here. <laughs> FOCs, yes. <laughs> oh, friends of Claire? Yeah. Okay. So um, we should just make sure that the definition is appropriate and not so broad. <coughs> and I believe and, further research is needed. Yeah. As to whether or not these entities have a list of interests yeah. that are protected under the law. Yeah. Okay. We did. We were talking about national organizations, um, like the Chamber of Commerce is one you mentioned. But I'm thinking about, for example, the ACLU. We have a Vermont chapter, and then we have a national. Yeah. Thanks to how I mean, does, doesn't that make it easier if there's a Vermont chapter and the Vermont chapter has non sentient beings or whatever that thing is, uh, <laughs> not natural persons. It's is about it a member. I, uh, yeah. But, but I assume you're a natural person, so <laughs> we don't care about you. I mean, and I'm a member also. But, but if a non natural person is a member, then that makes a difference. Well, right. if NPR... So if VPR hired a lobbyist to come in here to lobbyist on something, they have both individual yeah. and non-individual members. They would have Corporate to sponsors. say yeah. how many members they had. They have 20,762 members. And of those, 1,400 are non-individual members. And here's the list of them. Okay. Is that the way this reads right now? If that's how they define membership. So the question is, how do you define membership? Does everyone that makes a contribution to a nonprofit a member? Awesome. Probably not. Um, Actually, generally, that is the assumption. If you do underwriting, is that a membership? Yes. Why? My, my guess is you will find that most of them now, because of the pain in the neck differentiation of member, that they just, uh, most of them have assumed that all donors in whatever capacity are members. I well, think what organizations point. identify for publicity's sake and what their corporate bylaws may identify as yeah. members are, could be two different things. They could, they could, but they've moved to simplify that in the last several years. Well, but nonprofits will have very mixed membership. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, well, this seemed like a nice, simple little bill. It even so, had a name. Yeah. Well, it says uh, on page four that you're going to publish. 500 booklets. So, is there some cost to? Uh, huh? Uh, it just says publish no fewer than 500, containing an alphabetical listing of all registered lobbyists, that's including true. at a minimum current passport type photo, tax numbers. Who that's address. the lobbyist? That isn't the employers. Says the Secretary, Secretary of State. Secretary of State. 
So wait, but, but, but wait a minute, where that's are you? That's all current law. Page four. Page yeah. four. Oh, that's, that's current, current, current law. law. We get that book, Once a Dying We get the, the listing of who right. are the registered lobbyists. I okay. have, thank goodness, it's a face, it's a, it's face pictures. So you know who are the lobbyists. Yes. His question, I believe, Sorry. now that I read it, is does, uh, the if they register, there. if they have to publish this list of lobbyists and their employers, and one of the things that the employers had to had to disclose is the list of their membership. Does that have to be in right. the booklet itself? And if so, oh. this booklet would be about the size of the OED. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's what. Is that what that, you? That's were? where I was headed. Okay. Yeah. As usual. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't seem like and there's it would need to be, but we should. Make that I'm assuming point. a constant dynamic addition or subtraction from that list, from how yeah. current does it have to be? Yeah. Two, two answers. The, the, the straight answer is no. Because the way this is written, the book contains lobbyists and their employees. Okay. And okay. you can see an edit there that said the employer membership list is also need to be included in the book. And until it said that, I wouldn't. Number two is we don't publish the book anymore. I know. Oh. Which yeah. we're really paused about. Oh. We don't write like that. Allison thought you did. <laughs> I did. You did. Last by end, and we you, have you can, you can print. You can go up there. They that, did that, not. That's uh, pretty clear. That 500 booklets. In five minutes. At a minimum. Other areas of law you completely ignore. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so is that is the booklet? <laughs> Sorry, Will. I know we used to be friends. <laughs> so there's an argument about publication and, and online publication. Yeah. Uh, we believe needs this. So it's accessible online. The registered yes. lobbyist booklet. Yeah. Uh, in very nice, presentable form. It's really and nice. It's really, it's really. And nice. it's under your area? Yeah. Is it under elections? Yeah, under yeah. lobbyists. You can go right on their yeah. website and find it. Sure. You type I like in Vermont the better. You type in, you can print it oh, off. Yeah. You can <laughs> print off print off the book. You know what's nice about the online version? It's so good. The fact that every <laughs> couple weeks it's so changes good. and it yeah. updates. Yeah. In your printed book that you get to the current end of the pictures. Session. Yes, <laughs> current pictures. pictures. Claire, did you have a question? Well, I was just thinking one of the times it's of the most interest to us would be the second year of the biennium when we're running for office and we're wondering who's contributing to whom. So, if we're looking at the list of lobbyists, and there's no requirement that it be updated, you said it is. He does. It's the, do. it's the primary benefit yeah. of the yeah. But we should the VMS bring in Roche as a member before at the you know in the second right. year of the biennium yeah, yeah. and they start sure. sponsoring uh, different legislators it would be good for the public to know that yeah well that not that Roche is a bad company it's the only one I can think of uh, offhand but that would that would be Coke, the Coke industry I would okay. assume that if it's online it yeah. would be as they busy. add and subtract That's members they would, good, that good. would be recorded it sure. isn't in the lobbyist book but it would be recorded on the membership list I, it would be the responsibility of the organization to supply that information to the. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it says that. That's true, we can talk about fines. Well, that's because we don't have that now. I guess that was my yeah. point that maybe yeah. we should add that. Make the, it clear that they everybody have who's to. registered has a responsibility to have up to date information yeah. by. I bet there is already first of March some expectation of currentness, right? Yeah. Well, they do it with the lobbyists, so they probably. Okay. All right, so we'll get some more information on that one. It's actually updated overnight. I think Allison's going to print a okay. version of it right now. <laughs> I use it all the time. Well, um, you are great. I use my book actually with some regularity. I don't because they're so out of Most recently. Right? Thank you, Josh. You're welcome. So 213. Senator Pearson, another one of your yeah. bills. And uh, on this one, I think Will is the, the person to weigh in on this and how that would work. Sure. So, and you can do it from right there if you want to, Will. We're just being a little bit informal. Should I just give you yes, a reminder? Do. Well, he no. says don't move me from Allison because she's going to make me. So uh, a, rank, We're on now. a rank choice ballot is one that doesn't just have you fill out an oval. It oh, lets right. you say one, two, three, for instance. And um, this is, an, in, so that's something broadly that I've supported for a long time. But this is much more discreet. And this is already in play in a number of states, and I don't know the number, but it's more than zero. Yes. This only applies 
to presidential primaries and only to people who are voting from overseas. And we can talk about that, but that's how this is drafted. And what happens is somebody yeah. gets a ballot in mid-February, they have to quickly turn it around to get it mailed back to have it counted by early March. And, uh, shoot, I'm gonna not think of a name, but they voted for Boots, your own. Boots or Lewinsky? Pearson. Boots. Uh, well, I'm trying to give you a real example because there were yeah, thousands yeah. of yeah. votes that didn't count in the Republican primary specifically because there was a thousand candidates right, right, and right. only a hundred of them were left by Ted March. Cruz. Yeah, so Ted Cruz, so March, February 15th, I'm overseas, I love Ted Cruz, you mail it back, Ted Cruz is not even in the race by the time Vermont votes. Right. And so that person overseas, their ballot is just tossed out. It doesn't it counts for nothing. If there there would be a standard and, and this they do in Louisiana, it's the one place that I'm confident that does this. There's a standard that basically says when your candidate's no longer actively campaigning or whatever the standard is, and you pick Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz is no longer in, then we look at what we said number two should be. And if number two is still active, boom, it counts for that person. And I, I think it was, somebody did the analysis, but I, I want to say, and I, don't quote me on this, but it was like 4,000 votes that were tossed. because they Vermont? Were, yeah. Because they were, they were going for people who weren't they were, they were, they had withdrawn from the election, mm -hmm. but they're still on the ballot because Will has to print the ballots a long time ahead. So, mm -hmm. so this is, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, everybody understands my interest is sort of showing this is not so exotic, but you know, there's a way to do this. But because it's overseas, uh, it, it's a small, mm -hmm. small slice of the electorate. It's a kind of a pretty clear need in that sense, and um, I. I'd love to see if, if we could work it out, but and we have a bit of time. So actually, I <coughs> I might not go over for four today. I might actually go one for three. Uh, but this one, and I've read the bill. Um, is it one and two, or is it one through sixteen? Um, I don't remember exactly how it's drafted. You, you, you um, don't have any mention of it. You just say rank. Yeah. So then it would be one through yeah. whatever you got, and and we could. Different, uh, yeah, we could easily say top five, whatever. I could see top two. I yeah, I, I mean, oh, I, I mean, primary. I think it, huh? I, I mean, you have 17 primary. people yeah. in the. I yeah, I know, but I think at some point you might be introducing voter fatigue to, to expect somebody to sit there with 12 choices. Uh, well, just just to be clear, you don't have to, you could just right. do one if you want. Right. Okay, all You're right. not yeah. required. Uh, yeah. And so it would be to the voters' advantage to pick some number. But absolutely, if you wanted to say no, up to five, whatever, uh, that would be an improvement. So okay. why wouldn't we let the voter decide how many numbers they want to? Well, we'll, we'll no we'll, doubt, we'll. weigh in that the ballot gets bigger because you have to have some room this way <laughs> to go next to your rankings. Uh, okay. So there might be some practical reasons to limit it to five. Okay. But I, I don't know. Those ballots don't have a lot on them, you know, because they're just the primary button. Claire, did you have a Yes. Um, a question for Chris. You may have to look this up. He said you're, you couldn't remember exactly 4,000 votes that went uncounted in terms of their weight. Did it make any difference? Would That's it a have good made any difference? I don't, that is a great question. I'm not sure. You mean, in other words, did Trump, Trump won in Vermont, I believe, so did he win by less than 4,000 votes? That's a fascinating question, I don't know. I would suspect Can you he won find more out? handily than that, sure. I, you know, I don't know that that primary, I think there were, I, I'm not sure in the primary that he would have Well, if only we had an expert in knew where the election was also I thought Casey got in yeah. yeah. He knows where he was. Yeah, I thought Kasich like won. Kasich, I thought Kasich I thought won. Kasich won. Oh really? Kasich? Yeah. Well, then maybe it no, was a difference. No, he didn't difference. win the primary. Sadly, I well, thought he was going to. I remember we that Bernie right. was tied in a poll. I'm the pretty sure Trump. Trump really? At one point. Yeah. Well, well, I'm well. sure I'd be in Kasich would win. It it would be interesting to know if that sort of thing um, would make a difference anymore. 
elections. But yeah. even above and beyond yeah. that, I think just yeah. the, the fact that it didn't get counted is yes. of yeah. equal concern. Uh, yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I agree. So what do we need to, Will, what do we need to do around this one to, um, you don't have to. Can I, though? <laughs> oh, you can't. <laughs> to get away from those good things. Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> please you can't. Enough to say no, but still looking in the eyes. He did? 32% to John Music's 30%. Yeah. I don't know. Trump won. What's the raw number? 32. Um, let's see. <laughs> I thought that was the case. 1,968 votes. And Kasich got 18,500. Could have, could have so mattered. Those 4,000 votes had been for Kasich. Yeah, let me find if I can figure out. So that's why I said, well, I think it would have. Okay. So, Will, what Be do we need to do yeah, yeah. to do this? So, this, um, I haven't had a whole lot of time to absorb this particular concept or bill and the actual language in here. I know, I, I can feel comfortable saying that. The secretary supports the concept of right. choice voting, um, and I think especially for uh, military and overseas voters, for all the reasons Senator Pearson identified. Um, I think my overall comment here is if the committee is considering moving forward with this concept, that I need to really consider all the implications of it, and that there are, <laughs> there are more than are addressed here. I'm not, that's not in a way to try and deter you from doing it. No. I think it's mm -hmm. doable. Um, primarily, I'm thinking about the counting process. I saw it's addressed oh, somewhat yeah. here, and it's simplified. I, I keep thinking back to, um, it's not ranked choice voting, but what's the other alternative oh, form of yeah. voting? IRV, thank you. There it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely the same thing. Not really. I would, oh, I would <laughs> have thought it's not the way this is written. Well, okay. I mean, there's no majority required. I look at a single ballot. Yeah. And I look at your one, two, three, four. And then you look, I'd go with your one no matter what, unless that person's That's out. That's true. There's not a majority requirement, but the ballot and the is all the I or B is you look at the whole oh. result, whether. Yeah. It t it's. It, then the, it's the, the difference is, is the one didn't win. Yes. Right? There's no majority requirement, which is what you're referring to, but yes. the ballot and the... Is so the I would be same. more concerned if we were creating kind yeah, of a yeah. little subset IRV no, not at all. Yeah, for not our not counters. No. This, right. I think I can write some pretty good procedures to say okay. during the presidential primary when this kind of ballot comes through in your stack as you're counting, this is how you put you record the vote on the tally sheet, yeah. which is what that is. How? Do these? Yeah. A couple other distinct issues are Edgar Leisure Center. I just wonder how complicated it is. When I counted votes, we counted by hand. And I can't, so you count each ballot, um, probably within a minute. You count each ballot four times, essentially, if you rank the top, your top four choices. I, I've never done no, it without no. RV. No, you would, so, so if number one is Kasich, that's just a count for Kasich, you're done with that ballot. If number one is Cruz, and Cruz is gone, then you, then but you don't know until you're part way through the count. No, no, no. Or is this no, the withdrawn? It's, it's oh, right, right. Withdrew. It's withdrawn from the race. Yeah. So, so that is okay. A, a, so yeah. let's just yeah. take a minute. That they, what we think of as instant runoff voting, demands that some candidate reach a fifty percent threshold, which you don't know until you've counted them all. I see the difference. That I see it. Yeah. is a yeah. counting process. The yeah. ballot is just like what we're talking. Is about. updating the. The, the ballot. But this is not that at all, but, no. but it is the same looking ballot. And just you look at number two if number one is withdrawn voluntarily. I mean, if they're okay. still some long shot and okay. you picked it, that's fine. It just means that the counters, if they count by hand, are going to have to know who the actual candidates are, okay. which they it's, probably should I was anyway. just thinking that. They, so they they're also the to meet the counters, you're going to have to have a little list. Thank you. Here's the do not count names Did from they, the ballot. Do the overseas ballots get processed by town? Yes. Hmm. So will you spend some time thinking about this one? Yeah, can I put a couple more just notions yeah. in your head so you know yeah. that you're prepared when I'm coming back? Yeah. Um, there is language in this bill. I don't know if it was intended or not. Uh, but, but on line 10 of page 2, that requires a ballot to be sent to every 
military and overseas vote, which is not the case right now. They have to be requested by uh, each individual vote. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, that was not. That was not intentional. Yeah, so we would change that language. We want to change that, and especially yeah. so, because what I can tell you, and it, it, yeah, it no, does still have an effect with this bill, though. You, sh you all should know we do not identify a voter as military or overseas. They're just overseas. In the it's just about. It's no. They're, they're not distinguished from anybody else. Well, so how do you know where to, you have to know where to send it. They self-identify that when they make an absentee ballot request. Oh, so they're just an absentee ballot request like anybody else. It doesn't yeah. follow their voter record, their status as a military voter. It's interesting. We've thought about whether we want to do that, and there's some reasons to do that, just data-driven reasons anyway. But, you know, they, if I want to make an absentee ballot request, they click like any other voter right. like you do, then there's an option. I'm military and overseas. Right. Okay. Then they get the option of being emailed their ballot. That's yeah. a distinction I just want to talk about. But so that's why the blanket wouldn't work in the first place. And just yeah. so that you recognize also that it's yeah. not, it's somebody has to first tell you I'm overseas in the military yeah. and then they get this. Yeah, option. I mean, I, yeah. I could move that. But. Yeah, we would change that language. Yeah. So can they, can they do that online? Yes. Yes, they can. They can request and print. You get an email. Request. I want to make sure you're aware of that. So we've we've helped address the late military ballots problem with the email transmission out. I think that the sort of more overall way that this committee could consider addressing the problem in general is moving toward electronic return, allowing these people to email their ballot back, which other states do. We don't here yet. We still require a paper ballot in the mail. Maybe um, we can incorporate that into here. Right. Um, I don't know whether the AG's office would want to chime in, and I'd want to think further, too, about that. And I don't know if you looked into this at all. This offends the one person, one vote yeah, concept. No. I don't think in general because it's allowed, just because I know it's allowed in other places, in other contexts. Um, I guess those were the high level issues. So this will also require the creation of a separate ballot. And that's really, to me, the biggest thing. Is it's right now, all ballots that come back and are counted on election night look the same, feel the same, and are treated the same. And so it's, it's, it's except for the people that printed it at home. That printed it in France. They look, they look the same. The only difference is the stock. Right. You said that. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you're right. You're okay. Right. Okay. It's right. Feel, feel. Um, it would require a yeah. different counting process for a certain subset yeah. of ballots, which is new. And the last thing just occurred to me, although I think the way <coughs> wait when actually Senator Aaron made me think of it, I think we would need a provision in here, or I would probably advocate for one, that these ballots are hand counted. Because I know for a fact that our tabulators aren't set up. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And we so don't want to have to deal with yep. yeah. So yeah. they would then be identified as they were open and then put in a different pile as yeah. opposed yeah. to fed yeah. through them. And that you would want your so half of the open in They're so all coming in. Right. I'm, I'm, I know I must miss something on this, but I'm thinking, if we allow e-voting in essence, okay. why would we need to rank anything if, if, if they're up to speed as to who's still left? That's why would said. we need to? If we get there, this wouldn't be necessary. Okay. Good. I thought I was missing something. No. You weren't. And just to be clear too, I think we're really far away from actually casting a vote via the internet. The electronic return is either an upload of a PDF or an attachment to an email of a but PDF. But that could be done 24 hours ahead of the election, yes. too, could it not? No, you're, everything you said is correct. Okay. Yeah. So this, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Even if you're overseas, you could keep up to date with who's still left and then 24 hours before send you your vote. When, when I'm overseas and I register through the website and I click, I'm overseas. Mm -hmm. Does your office email me the ballot, or does does the city of Burlington email me the ballot after I've um, done it through your website? As a legal matter, the city of Burlington does. As a practical matter, our system does. Well, does the okay? Is it coming from the city? Though the request is made to the city, and it's, and it's coming from the city. So all the, the clerk in Burlington the actually sends the yes. Yeah, no, and it's the clerk, actually, that, and that really is the case, because it's, it's that clerk Amy saying, yes, send, you know, seeing the request, and right. so I can do it. Yeah. 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 I think it's got legs. Okay. Uh -huh.
could be a little <coughs> democracy package. You could do a whole little packet, Jim. Yeah. Got it, yeah. It really might be the kind of thing that's most appropriate to do next year. Well, well I'm here. Well, we, we could be this do it. Presidential trip until you got to right. I mean, we wouldn't. We could do it and make it effective at the next we presidential primary. In 20. Yeah. Starting November 8th, we'll shall figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> we would want to hear from your town courts on that. So. Yes. <laughs> I guess we can get some more time folks. <laughs> we always do. Okay. Okay. Anything else for on this bill? <coughs> so the next one we had on here is the public campaign finance uh, debt. Um, and may I ask, well, I guess I can ask. Yeah. The, the two of you are here representing your bosses in some way. Have they yet submitted a report on their campaign finance tour that they did this summer? We have not seen it. We would like it. We uh, are working on it. Because whatever you submit is not going to happen this year unless there's a vehicle for it to happen, but it's a, I, I will just register um, a complaint here that the, this tour went on all summer long and it was, there was a big deal made of it and yet, and so we're going to get the, we are the ones who are going to get the grief about not having responded to any of the suggestions that came out of this tour but we have not seen any kind of a report, so we can't respond to anything. So I'm just registering a complaint here that it is taking an awful long time since last summer to come up with this report. So you can pass that on to your two respective bosses. Thank you. This is called Kill the Messenger. <laughs> but it, I, I mean, I think it's true, is it not? That it's taking a long time? <laughs> I mean, how complicated is it to write up they have 27 yeah, suggestions from four meetings? Yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Yeah, they're working on it. Well, but I'm just saying it's taking them an awful long time to come up with a report that because nothing is going to happen this year as a result of it. So I'm just registering my complaint, and I want you to pass it on to your two bosses. Thank you. OK, if we took that long to file, chaos. Would, chaos. chaos, chaos would ensue. So, Or a certain amount of disgruntlement. Well, I think there will be disgruntlement, and it'll be aimed at us. <laughs> yes. I would say. I, I disgruntled. That was an example. Um, so yes, OK. 248. 248. I, look, I think this is a deeply principled discussion that is re really important. Yes, I. There's a big price tag here. I haven't identified a funny source. We need a fiscal. And the sucker. Uh, you know, I. It is a vehicle, and it would be uh, something to. Anytime we're talking about mm -hmm. other areas of campaign finance, you know, to me, it's very useful for us to have this, like. Or corporate donation discussion. It's kind of right. This is in some way very simple, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how much time it, it warrants, given that it's Where really hard to me to picture us being able to fund this. Thing. A fund would be at the time to really deal with it at this point. What I would suggest is maybe that um, certainly today we don't have time to delve into it. Is that um, hopefully we will get some suggestions pretty soon, and I think that one of the things that came up over the summer was the issue of public financing. So when we get that report, that we take this up at the same time, and could be the vehicle. Yeah, it could be the vehicle for something. It could. But also, I really appreciate you asking JFO for a fiscal note on that. I think. I for think us, they usually will. Be interested in doing a fiscal note if they yeah. believe there's any sh 
shot of us. Right, right. We don't want them to do a fiscal note if we're if it's something that we're not even going to seriously consider. Well, but we, quite you honestly, and I, you and I could figure out a fiscal note because we know there's yeah. only 50 house members and 30. Right, exactly. Well, but but quite honestly, the fiscal note has impact on whether anybody would want to take fair, it up. So fair. it's a catch 22. Okay. We could do a crude. So we, we could do a crude one by just figuring out the, how many members there right. are and the average 180 times. Yeah. Yeah. How many? The average of what it costs to run a campaign. And and you know, in some ways, this was an attempt to sketch an outline that mm -hmm. we could use, based um, a little bit on our public financing for governor and lieutenant governor, and a little bit on Maine and Maine. Connecticut, which have built two very successful mm -hmm. public finance systems where Republicans and Democrats overwhelmingly use it. So when I first got on this committee, Bill Doyle was the chair, yeah. and he was really promoting this and had a bunch of people from Maine talking to us. Oh. No, it's just, where they have a much more robust public financing and all their members, and they had term limits. Yeah, but we don't want to go there. <laughs> Unless you want to go there. Yeah. Huh? Well, they do have term limits, but that has nothing to do with their public financing. I'm just saying they have both those things. They have a lot of things. They also have branch trust. They yeah. also have that governor. That's why they well, call branch trust voting. They, they also they have a lot of things that we don't want to emulate. So you know what they okay. have that I'd love tonight is lobster. <laughs> what? What do you think? I just what had the most divine. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Sorry. Okay.